Greetings to our Reba Church family and to the wider Emmanuel Approach community. For this first training segment, I'm going to explain the principles underlying the first several steps in the Emmanuel Approach process. And then Charlotte and I will demonstrate these first steps. We will demonstrate the Emmanuel Approach process up to the point of establishing an interactive connection with God. Emmanuel Truth The first and most important principle underlying the Emmanuel Approach process is the biblical truth of Emmanuel. God is always with us. Jesus said that He and the Father will come and make their home in our hearts. Jesus said that God will send the Holy Spirit to us. And Jesus said very clearly that He will never leave us or forsake us, that He will abide with us always. I am convinced that these promises are profoundly and always true. Relational Circuits A second important principle underlying the Emmanuel approach has to do with the way in which God has designed our brains. God has created us to be relational beings. God has created us to be in relationship with Himself and with each other. And to this purpose, God has created a big chunk of our brains to serve as the neurological hardware for running relationships. I call this part of our brains our relational circuits. And we can connect with each other and with God much more easily when these relational circuits are online and strongly active. Positive Memories and Appreciation A third important principle underlying the Emmanuel approach has to do with another fascinating feature with respect to how our brains are put together. Feeling appreciation will predictably, consistently, reliably activate our relational circuits. That is, our brains are wired so that feeling appreciation will bring our relational circuits online if they are off, and it will increase the intensity of their activity if they are already on. So, to be very practical, if we recall and think about a positive memory, if we picture ourselves inside the memory and re-enter the experience as much as possible, if we take the time to flesh out the details and then focus on and connect with the details, we will increasingly feel appreciation as we increasingly connect with the memory. We can deliberately, predictably generate appreciation and activate our relational circuits by recalling and reconnecting with the positive memory and this will prepare our brains to connect with God. With respect to the positive memory, it can be a memory of any positive experience where you felt appreciation. For example, it can be a memory of holding one of your children as a newborn baby. It can be a memory of some other particularly beautiful experience with one of your children. It can be a memory of getting a Christmas present you particularly enjoyed. It can be a memory of a special experience from a family vacation. It can be a memory of a particularly fun time with a pet. It can be a memory of an especially positive time with friends. It can be a memory of a beautiful nature experience. Or it can even be a very simple memory, like enjoying one of your favorite meals. Interactive Connection with God After connecting with a positive memory and stirring up appreciation, so that our relational circuits are online and strongly active, we can establish a living, interactive, two-way, back-and-forth connection with God by inviting God's presence into the positive memory, asking God to help us perceive His presence, and then noticing whatever comes into our awareness. I have the easiest time connecting with Jesus, so I do this Emmanuel invitation and request prayer with Jesus. I invite Jesus to be with me. I ask Jesus to help me perceive His presence in some tangible way and I ask Him to help me establish an interactive connection, a connection where I can feel a two-way interaction going back and forth between us. A quick, practical point I want to make here is that sometimes this interactive connection can be very subtle, and the Lord's responses may not include explicit verbal content. Sometimes interactive connections with the Lord will be dramatic and easy to spot, and this is very nice. But it's important to remember that they can sometimes be very subtle, so that you don't miss the subtle connections due to watching only for something more dramatic. My own experience provides a good example. When I use the Emmanuel approach, I will occasionally get a clear, strong mental image of Jesus and have a clear, strong sense of His personal friendship presence. But most of the time, I experience God's presence in very subtle ways. For example, 
I usually just get a very faint mental image of Jesus' face. He's, he's usually in front of me, three to four feet away, a little up and to the left. He's usually smiling at me with a kind of quiet, kind, kind of friend smile. And I usually have just a very faint, intuitive, subjective sense of his personal friendship presence. However, when I am watching for these subtle manifestations of the Lord's presence, I can recognize them for what they are. And even though they are very faint, I somehow still know that they are real. Furthermore, these subtle perceptions of Jesus' presence are reinforced by faith, since I absolutely know it's true that he is always with me. And these subtle interactive connections are confirmed as the specific content is discerned to be consistent with Scripture and observed to produce lasting positive changes in my life. Options for the rest of the session. Finally, as mentioned in the introduction, after we have established an interactive connection with Jesus, we can pursue a variety of options for what to do with the rest of the session. We can just enjoy spending some additional time with Jesus, just hanging out in the positive memory together. We can ask Jesus a very simple follow-up question. Is there anything else you have for me today, or that you want me to know today? We can receive comfort from the Lord. For example, by talking directly with Jesus about anything that is distressing us, and then perceiving and feeling the truth that He is with us in our distress, that He is hearing us and understanding us, and that he cares about us and is glad to be with us. We can engage in intercessory prayer in the context of the Emmanuel Approach Interactive Connection. That is, we can focus on Jesus and just talk to him directly regarding our intercessory prayer concerns. We can do spiritual direction. We can focus on Jesus and engage with him directly as if he is a spiritual director. He's actually a very good spiritual director. We can do emotional healing work. We can go to a traumatic memory and then work with Jesus to resolve the trauma. Or we can pick an issue or question regarding which we would like some help and then look at and think about the issue or question with Jesus. This can be as simple as just focusing on the issue or question, asking Jesus, what do you want me to know about this, and then noticing and reporting whatever comes into our awareness. Or it can be more involved. For example, we can focus on the larger issue or question and then ask Jesus a whole series of specific questions that we are struggling with regarding the larger issue or question, pausing after each specific question to receive his response. Or we can start with, what do you want me to know about this? Wait for Jesus' response. Notice any reactions, questions, or new issues that come up as we ponder his response, and then repeatedly take these reactions, questions, and new issues back to Jesus. So now Charlotte and I are going to show you what this looks like. What it looks like to go through the initial steps in the Emmanuel approach process to the point that the recipient has an interactive, two-way, back-and-forth connection with the living, tangible presence of God. To summarize very quickly, first, Charlotte will help me to find a positive memory and then help me to recall and reconnect with the details until I feel appreciation. When I am connected to the memory and feel appreciation, Charlotte will coach me to offer what I call the Emmanuel Invitation and Request Prayer. She will coach me to invite God to be with me in the memory, to ask God to help me perceive His tangible, living presence, and to ask God to help me establish an interactive connection. After I offer the Emmanuel Invitation and Request Prayer, Charlotte will coach me to observe and describe whatever comes into my awareness and she will coach me to especially observe and describe in detail any perceptions that may even possibly be manifestations of Jesus' presence and or interactions with Jesus. Finally, as described earlier, once I have established an interactive connection with Jesus, there are a number of options for what to do with the rest of the session. For this demonstration, I'm just going to enjoy spending some additional time with Jesus, just hanging out in the positive memory together. And we are pretending that Charlotte is a layperson beginner 
because we want to demonstrate what it looks like for a layperson beginner to use these tools. So most of what she says will be coming straight from the sample coaching words that are included in the handouts we use for our basic training exercises. So, the first step is to find a positive memory to recall and reconnect with. For example, a memory of getting a Christmas present you particularly enjoyed, a memory of a special experience from a family vacation, a memory of playing with a favorite pet, a memory of an especially positive time with friends, a memory of a beautiful nature experience, or a memory of thoroughly enjoying your favorite meal. Hmm. Yeah, I, I, uh, I have a memory I can use. Okay, uh, so now I would like you to, well, you got your, close your eyes. Uh, imagine yourself being back inside of the original experience and describe the memory in as much detail as possible. For example, what did you see, hear, smell, taste, feel on your skin? What thoughts were you having at the time? What thoughts come as you think about it now? What emotions were you having at the time? What emotions come as you think about it now? And how does your body feel? And after you've described the memory, I want you to go back to and describe again briefly and especially focus on the aspects of the experience that you appreciated the most. Okay, so I'm remembering uh, our mule ride hmm. down to the bottom of the Grand Canyon. Um, the viewing audience a number of years ago, Charlotte and I went to the Grand Canyon and we, we booked this adventure um, where you take a mule train down to the bottom of the Grand Canyon. So just the, the ride down, the kind of, it, was, it was cool, it was fun, a little scary, but fun riding on the mules and the view. It was a clear, bright, sunny day, kind of crisp at the top and by the bo bottom of the Grand Canyon it was hot, but a lot of the way down, it was comfortable and a nice breeze and sunny day. And uh, there'd be places where you'd come around a corner or you'd kind of come out into, into a, a more exposed part of the trail. And the view would just be crazy. I mean, you, you would look up, it'd be like 2,000 feet up to the top of the, to the top rim of the Grand Canyon. It would be 3,000 feet down mm. to the bottom of the canyon. And the formations, the, the, the formations you would see, it would be the size of a city block. There would just be, I mean, these crazy ginormous things. You could look 10, 5, 5 10, 15, 25 miles down the canyon with just the grandeur, the, the gigantic awesomeness of the whole thing. It was just, that was sort of an awesome, kind of almost a form of worship, just to the magnificent, crazy hugeness and awesomeness of creation. That was kind of cool. And then uh, when we got to the bottom, one of the part of the experience I'm especially focusing on is we got to the bottom, you know, it's, I don't know, late afternoon. It was at the bottom of the Grand Canyon, it was, I think, 105 degrees, so it was hot. <laughs> um, and we were hot and dusty and gritty and sweaty, and you know, we've been riding mules all day. So we put our gear in the little cabin where we were, where we were gonna stay and got our swimsuits on, and there was a little creek, you know, 100 feet away or whatever from our little bunk area. And uh, chilly water, clear, clean, chilly water and it was a kind of a small creek. It might have been 12, 15 feet apart across to me where we were, mm -hmm. the place we were exploring it, just, a, just like the width of our living room. And anywhere from, you know, 10 inches deep to a few feet deep so you could kind of wade and splash in it. And we got all wet, we kind of cleared, we uh, washed off and splashed around and got all cool and fresh. And then there was this, there was this big rock in the middle of the creek and we, uh, it was all kind of toasty, warm, so we perched up on this big rock in the middle of this beautiful, clear, clean creek. Um, kind of, you could see some of the hugeness, the formations of the Grand Canyon in the distance. There's just kind of little trees and bushes along the side of the creek. So we're just perched on the big rock. We're kind of enjoying being fresh and cool and clean and then kind of 
sitting on the warm rock. And then this summer tanager comes. There's this uh, kind of bird that's just bright red. And this one had a little bit of orange and yellow on it because of the way it's plumage. Well, this particular one was like a, yeah, mostly red with a little bit of orange and yellow on it. <laughs> And uh, very unusual. You usually, these, usually these are birds that are way up in a tree. They're 30, 40, 50, 80 feet up in a tree. You see them far away with your binoculars. And the only time in my life I've ever seen a tanager do this, it was hopping along, just right at, right, you know, along the edge of the creek in the bushes. And not, you know, birds will come down to the water for a few minutes. But this was hopping around in the bushes within a foot or two of the ground on either side of us on the creek and even hopping on the rocks in the middle within, you know, seven, eight, it was so close you could almost reach out and touch it. I mean, if we would have tried to, of course we were being totally still. And it's for a long time, you know, a bird sometimes will fly down and for two seconds and realize it's close to you and fly away. This, this just hopped around within you know, eight, 10, 12 feet of us for 15 minutes, just hopping one side, the other side, and, and uh, especially it, it hopped around. There was this little bush that was on our right side. It was, you know, eight feet away, so close. Mm -hmm. And it just was hopping around in that little bush. Mm -hmm. And then kind of the pieces all fit together were, huh, were, the name of the creek is Bright Angel Creek. We're sitting in Bright Angel Creek. Mm -hmm. And it's Pentecost. I mean, honest to goodness, no joke, it's Pentecost. And Charlotte, you, know, you're, you, you think, oh, it's like the burning bush. I mean, like there's this little flame, like this little living flame, <laughs> the red, orange, and yellow, hopping around, moving around in this little bush that's right by, like, you know, you almost reach out and touch it. And it was like there was, Charlotte says, it's like a, a burning bush. It's mm -hmm. like the Holy Spirit is here with us. Mm -hmm. And that was, that whole little piece at the end was so particularly special. Mm -hmm. The whole, it was just, that, the day was glorious. The whole experience was glorious. And especially at the end of the day there where we're sitting there together and we're relaxed and we're clean and we're comfortable. And again, you know, the sun's just kind of fading in the late afternoon. And, so now I'm going to do that piece, uh, that last piece where you um, go back and remember again briefly and focus especially on the best parts. Um, as you can probably tell, I'm already feeling appreciation, but some people have particular difficulty connecting with their positive memory. For those folks, this last piece is, uh, can be really helpful. So I'm going to pretend that I need it and demonstrate what that looks like. So yeah, what about the best parts? Um, a couple of those, there'd be a, there were a couple places on the trail down where the, maybe the view was particularly spectacular. Again, where you'd be looking up 2,000 feet to the upper rim and you're looking down 3,000 feet to the bottom of the canyon. And that, that was just awesome. It's hard, to, words, um, it's hard to get words that are big enough. I mean, mm. you know, awesome and magnificent, but it's just... Uh, you can, it's so huge, you can just feel it in your body, the, just the crazy, magnificent hugeness of the whole Grand Canyon scenario. It was, it was just crazy amazing. Um, and then again, at the, at the end of the day, late in the afternoon, uh, sitting there on that warm, toasty rock, <laughs> we're all clean and fresh, and, and watching the little living flame hopping around mm -hmm. in the bush. And it really was like, I mean, it, it was like there was this little flame moving around in this bush. Uh, and then the thought, we're at Bright Angel Creek, it's Pentecost, and it's like there's a living flame moving around in this little bush right beside us. Mm -hmm. And you know, your thought of, ah, it's like the Holy Spirit. That was a, mm -hmm. yeah, <laughs> that was a good day. <laughs> so I, I definitely feel like I'm connected to the positive memory and feeling appreciation. Okay. 
So now I want you to pray something like, Jesus, I know in faith that you were with me when Charlotte and I were watching the summer tanager at the bottom of the Grand Canyon. I welcome you to be with me now in this memory. Help me to perceive your living interactive presence. Yeah, Lord, I do know in faith that you were with Charlotte and I when we were in that wonderful, amazing, fun memory sitting in the little creek there, Bright Angel Creek, watching the little summer tanager hop around in the bush. And I, I do welcome your presence. I welcome your presence to be with me there, Lord, and I ask that you would help me to perceive your living, interactive presence with, with us, with me in that, in that experience. And uh, as you're able, notice and describe everything um, that comes into your awareness, regardless of whether it feels important or makes any sense. And I especially want you to notice and describe in detail any perceptions that may even possibly be manifestations of Jesus' presence and or interactions with Jesus. Yeah. Huh. So, yeah, I, actually, they kind of were coming right after I was, did that prayer. Um, I kind of had an image of, like my, usually for me, a very, very faint mental image, but it still feels real somehow. I kind of had a, just a, an image of Jesus' face. It's kind of here now as I'm talking, as I talk about it, it kind of gets clearer. And it's like, He's sort of larger than life, and he's kind of to our right and up a little bit. Mm -hmm. um, and he kind of has a smile. Um, he doesn't like doesn't say anything out loud, but I kind of somehow can kind of sense his thoughts. He's kind of like uh, that. That went well, didn't it? <laughs> um, like when you plan some special thing for your like somebody plans a big engagement announcement or a party, or you know, you, you do some, you plan some special thing for a friend or your wife or, and, you know, surprise party, whatever the deal is. And it all goes, everything works out perfectly. And when you kind of, uh, it all unfolds and the person gets to the place where like, oh, you know, oh, the little table set for dinner with the candle lights and the little alcove or whatever the deal is. And they're kind of, oh, this is amazing. And your thought is like, ah, that's, that's exactly how I how I, like, mm -hmm. that went well, didn't it? Mm. And you're kind of tickled with yourself for like, yeah, I, that really went well. That's kind of the feeling. He's kind of tickled with himself for, you know, like that went well, but also, um, gosh, what would be the right? It's, it's the subtle nuances. It's uh, like it. It always feels perfect, but it's hard to get. It's, it takes a while to get the words to correctly, to mm. adequately and to, to communicate mm -hmm. how all the little nuances are perfect mm -hmm. as far as every little balance, every little, it's just every nuance is perfect. It just takes, it's hard to, to get all that described accurately. So mm. he kind of has this smile, this little kind of little wink, um, this kind of, um, yeah, that, that went well, didn't it? And also, you know, the whole, He's kind of tickled with himself for the Bright Angel Creek. It's Pentecost Day. <laughs> it's the, you know, the the little summer tanager, the little living flame bouncing around in the, <laughs> hopping around in the bush. And he's just kind of, <laughs> yeah, that, uh, <laughs> kind of how you like that or not. <laughs> he, he's, he's kind of, he's there. He's kind of watching us. He's <laughs> got this big smile. He's kind of just, pleased with the whole thing and, mm. and um, yeah okay well great so now I want you to just spend five to ten minutes just enjoying being with Jesus just spend five to ten minutes just hanging out with Jesus and as you're able notice and describe everything that comes into your awareness yeah so Hmm. 
Thanks for being here with me, Lord. It's like he's, on one hand, he's kind of still sort of, um, I still can't quite get words for all the subtle nuances of mm. the, how fully aware he is of how well it all, of how, how it all came together and how um, he's kind of tickled with all that. And he's enjoying how much we're enjoying it. Mm. That's kind of fun. As I think about just, okay, so Lord, I'm, yeah, I'm going to just enjoy, can we just hang out here together? And it's kind of a, it's a sort of a different image. It's like we're sitting there together and he's kind of a, a few feet to my left, which would sort of be in the river, but he, it's like he somehow doesn't, it doesn't bother him to kind of just float above the water by the edge of the, Maybe a little bit in the bushes, but he's, he's sort of, I can, send his, I can see an image of him and kind of sense his presence, you know, six or eight feet to my left. It doesn't really bother him that whether that particularly works with the bushes and the water, but he's kind of sitting there and we're both kind of just, just kind of looking at the whole, the trees and the breeze and the sunshine on the cliffs in the distance as the sun's as the late afternoon sun and the and the little little real quiet noise of the of the creek flowing and um, it's uh Like if I weren't doing the demonstration, I would, I would just take 15 minutes just to sit here and enjoy it without talking. Hmm. It feels like, um, hmm. yeah, yeah, it's like we're just sitting there quietly, no need to talk. And part of it is like we both, it's like that Dr. Wilder talk, uh, Jim talks about that thing he talks about the mutual mind where we mm. kind of have a shared experience. I can, I can sort of feel and sense, perceive what he's thinking and feeling mm -hmm. and vice versa. So we totally kind of, we're totally perfectly synchronized and we kind of know what, it, what each other are thinking and feeling. We're just sitting there, no need to talk, just sort of sharing the appreciation, the, uh, just being aware of the the beauty, the, and part of part of the um, like whenever I'm with a real person in nature, there's almost nobody who wants to sit and just watch it as long as I do. So usually I'm kind of worrying, you know, are they getting bored? Um, are they comfortable? Are they hungry? Are they thirsty? Are they tired? Are they restless? Are they worried about bugs? Do they are they are they wanting to go do something else? Or do they want to talk about you know? Are they really are they okay just standing here this this long just just kind of looking and enjoying the whole all, all the just when I am in nature I can sort of be I'm a watching and kind of appreciating the sounds, the crickets, the insect sounds, the frog or a toad or a bird or five or six or eight different birds and the trees and the bushes and the lichens and the mosses and the flowers and the ferns and the rocks and the weather and the cloud formations and the, the animal tracks. And, the, uh, and it's like he's, I can feel that he's, He's totally relaxed. He's glad to be with me. He's not wanting to be somewhere else. He's not impatient. He's not irritable. He's not uncomfortable. It's like this profound sort of sense of contentment, mm. um, including just he's just enjoying being with me. Mm. And he's like, we could just sit here together 
and just appreciate the nature for as long as you want. And I don't ever get that with anybody. I don't. I don't ever get that with anybody else to the same degree. Mm. And there's a few people that can sit and watch nature as long as I can, sort of. But even there, I'm I'm wondering, like, mm. you know, I I can't feel their consciousness as mm -hmm. in the same way that, like, with Jesus, I can I know exactly what he's thinking and feeling. So I'm not even wondering, does so and so have a question? You know, do they think they you know are they ready to move on? I'm just I can just enjoy being with him. And there's zero, none of that other, all those questions, worries, concerns, none of that's, that's all, none of that's there. It's just completely, um, we're just enjoying just being there together. And that's, um, like as far as enjoying nature, it's like, Lord, the Lord is my best. There's, mm -hmm. there's nobody else that can appreciate nature with me like Jesus. Mm. Mm. And that's kind of uh, interesting. Mm. Mm. And uh, kind of hard to describe too. It's like, uh, you know, the more you know about creation, the more you can appreciate it you know, as far as, oh, it's pretty, that's, I mean, some people can, like in 30 seconds or maybe a minute, they're like, oh, wow, this is a pretty day, nice breeze, pretty trees, kind of big mountain. Okay, let's move on. Mm. And if the more you know, the more glory you can appreciate, mm -hmm. the more all the nuances and subtleness in the, in the ecosystem and the interactions and all the different the diversity. And that's like, that's all like a level that I, I can kind of appreciate mm. just with all my nature knowledge. But it's like kind of perceiving Jesus' experience. He can kind of feel the whole thing. He can, um, mm. he can, uh, see, he's not even just kind of seeing it. He, he, can, mm. he can perceive the whole, he can perceive creation in a way that I normally can't. Mm. Mm. Just like the, all the patterns and the complexity and the interactions and just, I, I can't get words for it. There's sort mm. of a sense of just sort of his presence in creation. And, mm. Mm. It's, it's just, uh, it's like uh, the thought comes, like the average person, um, they say, Oh, pretty tree, pretty mountain, pretty weather. Okay, let's go. You know, let's go get a snack. And I could sit there for twenty minutes and like, oh wow, it's like you could hear the the way the cottonwood leaves rustle, and it's because they have a certain stem that's shaped a certain way that helps them, you know, move in the wind that helps them decrease leaf damage, and that is all that. And just by seeing the motion and hearing it, it kind of reminds me of all that cool elegance of the design, and the. Different species, and you know the bushes and the ferns and the rocks and the lichens and the mosses and the, you know, the, uh, there's 25 things I'm kind of perceiving. And it's like his sort of perception of his ability to feel and perceive mm. and appreciate the whole uh, glory of creation mm. and his presence in creation is like, um, like uh, it's. Like the difference between me and the average camper, you know, he can, his his depth of perception of all of the glory and creation mm -hmm. is like that much further. Mm -hmm. Like compared to compared to him, I'm a I'm a beginner. Mm -hmm. hmm. Hmm. Yeah, it's, uh, mm. hmm. it's kind of. <sighs> If we weren't doing a demonstration here, I could happily just hang out here for quite a while. Mm. It's uh, yeah, that's pretty cool. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And I can't believe I forgot to put Kleenex on the couch. Oh. 
Ah. <laughs> so that was cool. There you go. That's what it looks like to go through the initial steps of the Emmanuel approach process to the point where the recipient uh, has established an interactive connection with the Lord and then spend some additional time just enjoying being with the Lord, hanging out with Jesus. Thank you, sweetheart, for helping me with that demonstration. You're welcome. Love you. Love you. Again, I connect most easily with Jesus, so I do the Emmanuel approach process with inviting Jesus. And I want to note that this basic Emmanuel approach process does not always work right away for everybody. The good news is that if the process does not work for you, it just means that there are blockages in the way. And when you resolve the blockages, you will consistently be able to perceive God's presence and establish an interactive connection with God. See training segment four for an introduction to basic troubleshooting and see the Big Lion book for a thorough discussion of basic, intermediate, and advanced troubleshooting. So let me close with a prayer. Lord, we thank you for your Emmanuel promise and for the wonderful Good News Emmanuel truth that you are always with us, that you are always glad to be with us, and that you always want to connect with us. Help us to use these simple tools to become aware of your wonderful, living Emmanuel presence and to establish an interactive connection with you. We thank you that you enjoy being with us and that we can enjoy just hanging out with you. Amen. Amen. We love you. We miss you. Bless you.